All right, you guys. So let's go ahead. I know this uh, worksheet's a little messy. Perhaps I should have uh, cut another one, but I think we can get it. I'll just use a different color. So uh, again, now what we're doing is we're talking about domain and range. All right. This is basically my inputs, and this is my outputs. All right. And so we're going to take retake a look. We already know which relations are functions. That was an earlier video. But for each one of those relations, what's the set of inputs? Domain. And what's the set of outputs? Range. And so looking at this first one here, we can see that uh, A is going somewhere, B is going somewhere, D is going somewhere, and C is going somewhere. So the domain is going to be a discrete case, right? It only has four things in it, A, B, C, and D, right? There's no in between A, B, C, and D, right? There's four distinct values. So I can only see four items going to these items over here. So there's only four, I four items in the domain. Same thing with the range. When I look at the outputs, right, one is a possible output, two is a possible output, and three is a possible output, right? One was created by B. Three was created by B and C. Two was created by A and D. So they are outputs that are being created. So my range, in this case, again, would be discrete. I'm not talking about everything between one and three, right, which are there's a lot, 1.2, 1.7, 2.8. Right? I'm just distinctly talking about 1, 2, and 3 as being the only things in there. So in this case, both our domain and range are discrete. All right? What about the next one? Well, again, for domain, you know, what values seem to be making this rule work? Well, E goes somewhere, and F goes somewhere, and G goes somewhere. So again, discreetly, we have E, F, and G. And then in terms of the range, when we look at the outputs, right, alpha definitely was created, so it's in the set. Omega was definitely created, so it's in the set. But beta, right, is kind of standing here a little lonely, but there's nobody who creates it, right? E doesn't create beta, F doesn't create beta, or G. So the items in the domain do not create that item there. So beta is just kind of an outlier, if you would. Nobody's really creating it, so therefore it's not part of the range. Remember, uh, definition, the range, or the set of outputs created by an input. So beta is sitting there, but nobody's being matched to it. Okay, so uh, there we have it. Uh, same thing for the next one. Uh, again, we're talking about, you know, one, three, five, seven. So there's a lot of numbers in between, right? A high number of one and three and five and seven but we're only defined for those four distinct values right we're not talking about the interval we're not talking about all numbers between one and seven we're just talking about ones being you know creates an output three creates an output five does seven does and actually three creates two so our domain in this case would be a discrete set again it only consists of the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. Uh, you also note, notice I'm putting things in alphabetical or in numerical order. That's also a good habit to get. What about the range? Well, again, if I look at what's outputted, right, 4 gets outputted, and 6 gets outputted, 9, 12, and 18. So again, using my uh, curly brackets, right, we have another discrete case here in terms of our range. Uh, same thing over here, the domain. If we look at it, it's only defined for one, two, three, four, five things. So we got zero in the domain, 50, 100, sorry, I'm running out of room, 150, and 200, right? So those are all the things in the domain. What about the range? Well, it looks like 20's in there, and 60's in there, and 100's in there, right? Those are the only three outputs that are created by all these inputs. So there's your range. So far, everything's been discrete. Uh, same thing here. Again, perhaps the table will help us out, right? What's the domain? Well, there's only five things that seem to have an output, right? So using our discrete notation, one, two, three, four, and five. What about the outputs? Well, there's only five things that were on the output, so it looks like the range is curly brackets, two, four, oops, five, and eight. Actually, there's only four things in it because four was uh, rep repeated, all right? So these five items create those four items, both discrete sets, all right? How am I doing so far? Everybody okay? And then last but not least, because uh, we're gonna need some more math, but here looking again at my table, it looks like my domain consists of, uh, it looks like 
negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Right, that would be my domain for this guy. And my range, it looks like we have negative 2, 0, 2, 5, and 8. Right, so these five distinct values were created by those four distinct values. Now, what's the rule to get this? That is another story, right? How did A become, uh, you know, 2? How does 3 create 18 and 12, respectively? How does, you know, 150 create 60? Finding the rules, another story. But all I can tell based off of the schematic or the table or the data that's presented that these items of input create these items of output. And that's really all we can do, right? Um, if, I, uh, if I don't have the, the rule clearly defined, um, then I can't create anything else. So we just got to go by what's, what we see. Um, for equations, it turns out that finding the domain and range is very difficult. Um, for the range, we're going to usually need a graph, all right? And for the domain, we're going to usually need a graph, but there's some ways around that. And of course, if we're graphing, we're all the way back to where we learned about graphing. We're either using our calculators, right, or we're doing all that point plotting. So it is very tough to find domain and range without a graph. Doable, and we'll actually see that for domain, but very, very tough. But I'm going to use the, I'm going to use another video to talk about that story. There's your start for domain and range. Uh, right now, I do believe in 3.1, most of our domains and ranges are in fact discrete. So that kind of makes it nice. And then we move into 3.2. Uh, they're both discrete and intervals. So we'll, we'll we'll pick up that story when we get there. For now, hopefully that's a good idea about what's in, what's out, what's in the domain, what's in the range, and this discrete notation that we need to learn. Alrighty, so more ideas coming forward. I'll see you guys in the next video.